Hey what's going on guys then by for simple snippets and welcome back to another video tutorial on core java programming and today's topic is going to be part 3 of exception handling which is throw and throws in java programming so in the previous two video tutorials of this core java programming playlist we've been covering topics under exception handling so in the first part we talked a little bit about theory and what is the concept of exception handling and how it works what are the classes in exception handling then in part 2 we discussed the try catch and finally block and this is the part 3 of this video wherein we are going to discuss the two keywords that is throw and throws so with that being said let's start off with today's topic this is our official website and if you go to this article which is under courses in the core java programming i'll just drop this link of the article in the video description so that you can directly go to this article so this article covers throw and throws keyword in java programming mind you guys this these are two different words so we'll talk about the differences also and we'll understand each of them properly both theory as well as practically so let's start off with throw and throws by the way if you have missed the previous two videos and if you don't know what exception handling in java is i would definitely recommend that you go through this entire playlist of java programming i've linked that in the video description also and probably you can also see a card so go first clear out those concepts that is the basics of exception handling and then the try catch and finally block also and then this topic would be very easy So yeah let me just zoom in a little bit. So starting off we know that we have five keywords which are used in exception handling try catch finally throw and throws so we've already covered these three so we are on throw and throws. So before even we get into the throw and throws keyword and their use cases and how do we go about using them there's a concept of java exception propagation which means how the exception is thrown and how it is traversed in the different methods okay. So just talking a little bit about it an exception is first thrown from the top of the stack and if it is not caught it drops down the call stack to the previous method so what happens is when you are calling different methods so let's say your method number 1 calls method number 2 and then method number 1 is in your main method right so everything starts from the main method or main function and then inside that we have method number 1 which calls method number 2 and let's say the exception occurs in method number 2 okay so what happens is these methods are placed properly in the stack memory so we have stack and heap in our memory so the main method would be at the bottom of the stack then we have method number 1 which is called from the main me main method and then we have method number 2 which is on the top of the stack which is called from method number 1 so if exception occurs at method number 2 and it is not handled over there that exception is being thrown in method number 1 if it is not handled in method number 1 it is thrown to the main method and that's that's basically what java exception propagation is so if you read this theory you'll understand it very well and in fact i also have a program so let's discuss this program in theory because we're not going to type this out this is just a concept that i want you to understand so we have void m over here which has that arithmetic exception which is going to happen over here then we have void n so n method calls m you can see over here and then we have void p so void p has that try catch block inside which we call n and lastly in our main method we call obj.p so we're calling this method from the main method p is calling n and n is calling m however you can see that the exception handling is performed only in method p so let's see how it works you can see output exception handled and normal flow which means that we have performed exception handling but let's see how it looks like in the memory stack so in the memory you can see we have the main method which is at the bottom of the stack we have p we have n and we have m so main method calls p p calls n and n calls m in the m we have the exception that is happening that is arithmetic exception so you can see exception occurred since no exception handling provided in m exception thrown to the calling method so for m n is the calling method so the exception is thrown over here again in n we don't have any exception handling we do not have try catch in n so exception is thrown to p right so p called n right so the exception is thrown from n to p inside p we have try catch block right so here exception handling provided so that is how the exception propagation happens so this was one concept that you need to clear and understand so yeah now that we have understood the exception propagation concept let's understand the java through keyword first okay so the java through keyword is used to explicitly throw an exception by explicitly i mean when you want to throw an exception you can do it using the through keyword so we can throw either checked or unchecked exceptions we've talked about this in the first part and the throws keyword is mainly used to throw custom exceptions now in your program there are situations where you have some 
irregular or some exceptions which are not basically defined yet okay so that can be custom to your program or your functionality so let's say you are taking or you're conducting a voting program and you want age to be above 18 so there is no exception which which can be directly thrown if the age is under 18 so in that case you can create your custom exceptions and we'll see how to create our own custom exceptions in further videos but right now just understand that you can create your custom exceptions and to throw them you have to use the throw keyword okay so that's when actually the throw keyword is used but here we'll take our inbuilt exception example to understand it the syntax goes like this throw and then exception so in reality it would be throw new io exception so in java we know that exceptions are objects right so when we say new io exception an object is being created over here and this is that constructor which is a parameterized constructor which has taken a string over here and that is what is being passed okay so here is an example what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy and paste this in our dave c++ id because i don't want to waste a lot of time so let me just copy this method and i'll explain to you what what is going on in the method so open up your netbeans id so that you can program along with me and i'm just going to paste it you can also copy and paste the code from the web article into your netbeans id so yeah this is a static method which is static void validate it is taking an integer value and we are checking if age is less than 18 then we are throwing new arithmetic exception not valid and if it is greater than 18 we are printing a message welcome to vote okay sounds pretty simple right so in the main method we can directly call this method because we don't need to create an object because it is a static method and we've talked about static keyword in the videos in this playlist so i'm just gonna say validate and i'm just gonna pass 13 so it is less than 18 right so it, it is supposed to throw an exception now understand that when i'm saying throw new arithmetic exception you can see that there is nothing being used to handle that exception so we are not using try catch anywhere right so the normal execution should be cancelled or should be stopped right so let's see if that works and there you go you can see exception in thread main has occurred and build failed now the reason why the build failed is because even though an exception was thrown you can see throw new exception there was no try catch used in the main method that is the reason why the system dot out dot print and rest of the code was not printed right so if i were to say try and catch so we know how to use try catch we've learned it in the previous video if I would have been doing this and if I now run this, there you go, you can see build successful rest of the code, which means we've handled the code. We've just not printed anything in the catch just because I just wanted to show you that when we apply try catch to that validated method, the normal execution is continued and we get the output rest of the code. Otherwise it was being stopped in between, right? So yes, throw, as I mentioned, is used to throw an ex exception explicitly whenever you want. And it is usually used when we have custom exceptions, but this is just an example. So coming back to our article, let's move on to Java throws keyword. So there is always a confusion between throw and throws, but it's pretty different. Now understand that the Java throws keyword is used to declare an exception. It's not used to throw an exception. It is used to declare an exception. And by declaring, I mean that when you, when you think, when you think that your method is going to throw an exception, you declare that 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 method is going to throw an exception and it gives an information to the programmer that there may occur an exception so it is better for the programmer to provide exception handling code so that the normal flow can be maintained okay so now you must be wondering where would this kind of scenario occur so now let's say you're in a real life project where the project is very huge so there are multiple programmers working on the same project and a scenario occurs that you are working on a particular class and some methods related to that class and your friend is working on some other class and some other methods of that class so now you know that your method might cause some exception so you are working in databases and you know that there might be some sql exception that is going to happen okay but your friend does not know because he is not working on your same classes right but he is going to need your class he's going to use an object of your class so he doesn't know that so in that case when you say that your method throws an exception so your friend knows that okay this method explicitly declares that it is going to throw an exception so better that i would provide that exception handling so it helps in that real life scenario where there are multiple files multiple projects and multiple people working on a same project so exception handling is mainly used to handle the checked exceptions right so if there occurs any unchecked exception such as null pointer it is the programmer's fault right 
and that he is performing that check before code code being used okay now the primary advantage as i mentioned is it provides information to the caller of the method about the exception and this is how the syntax of throws is so it's very different from normal throw so this is your method return type of the method method name and then you say throws and the type of exception so it comes along with the method okay so here's an example just to show you so this is our method void m and it's saying it throws io exception so somewhere in your method you know that there might come an exception which is related to input output so in that case you say throws io exception and now inside this me method i'm purposely throwing that so i'm explicitly saying throw new io exception but let's say you have like 10 to 15 line of code for file handling and there's some actual error or exception that is happening so in that case your method is saying that it throws so it's not going to handle itself you know the try catch block is not there in your method so this states that your method is not going to handle the exception and it is the responsibility of the caller method so it is the responsibility of void n and since void n is also throwing io exception it is the responsibility of void p because void p is calling n so the try catch should be there in void p method okay so when you say throws io exception it merely says that your method is not going to handle it but your method probably might generate that exception and it is the responsibility of the caller method or the method in which your method is being called that has to perform the actual exception handling so i hope this idea is a little bit clear now okay so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this code and just paste it in our netbeans id just to give you a reference and an idea about how to go about this in the practical scenario so when you paste it you will probably get an error saying cannot find this io exception so it's a basically class which you need to import so when you see when you click on this bulb you'll get an option add import for java.io just click on it and this error will go and in the main method you can just create an object object of your class so this might be different in your case so i'm going to say obj is equal to new java application 4 so java application 4 is my class so that's the class name it might be different in your case and then i'm calling obj.p so this is that method that i'm calling inside which we have try and catch and then we have n so we have n which is calling m and then we have m which throws io exception and even n throws io exception which means that both of these are not going to handle the exception and it is the duty of the void p method which has to handle it and i can also say throws io exception over here also so now it is the duty of the main method to perform try and catch okay so if i say try and catch the error will go okay now i can also be specific or generic i am being generic because i am trying to capture all the exceptions right now i know that it is an io exception so i can replace this catch and i can say io exception so if i run this let's see what happens so there you go exception handled handle successfully because we also had a try catch in the void p method and in the catch we had exception handled successfully that's why it got printed and in the main method also we performed a try catch because once we declare that a method throws any kind of exception it is not the duty of that method to perform try and catch it is the duty of the caller function or caller method to perform the try and catch okay so i hope this code is clear enough and understandable enough for you to understand the difference between throw and throws so a little bit about the difference in terms of theory so java throw keyword is used explicitly to throw an exception so when you want to throw an exception explicitly you say throw and then the exception name and throws is used to declare that your method is going to throw an exception it's not actually throwing an exception but you might or your method might throw an exception so you just want to declare it so throw is followed by an instance throws is followed by a class so it's basically not class it's used along with methods throw is used within the method throws is used with the method signature so that's what i meant and you cannot throw multiple exceptions but you can declare multiple exceptions in throws okay so so to give you an understanding in terms of practical aspect in the netbeans id i can say void p throws io exception comma sql data exception comma arithmetic exception and so on so i can declare multiple exceptions which means that this method will throw any of these exceptions if they occur in the method but with throw i cannot 
थ्रू मल्टीपल एक्सेप्शन आई कैन ओनली थ्रू वन वन एक्सेप्शन एट अ टाइम ओके सो दीज आर द सम बेसिक डिफरेंसिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ थियरी बिटवीन थ्रो एंड थ्रोज एंड बोट ऑफ दियर यूजेज आर टोटली डिफरेंट राइट सो इवन दो इट्स जस्ट वन अल्फाबेट डिफरेंट दैट इज थ्रो एंड थ्रोज वी हैव वन एस इन थ्रोज बट द द यूज एंड द वे वी यूज दैम इज टोटली डिफरेंट राइट सो हाउ यू अंडरस्टूड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ थ्रू एंड थ्रोज की वर्ड एंड हाउ दे हेल्प अस इन परफॉर्मिंग एक्सेप्शन हैंडलिंग एंड द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू चेक आउट दिस आर्टिकल ऑन आर वेबसाइट and let me know in the comments how you find this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments also if you are new on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel because i upload a lot of it tutorials computer science oriented video tutorials and we already have a lot of them on our channel so you can check them out as well so thanks for watching guys talk to you guys in the next video tutorial peace